by Peter, Professor Peter Stavroulakis. Uh, please, Peter, you can do it from here. Yes, Peter, you have five minutes. Philip, I have my USB theorem. Θα βγάλω την κάμερα αφού έχουμε την άκτοπ. Αυτό είναι το... Και από εδώ θα να δείχνεις. Να το Όχι, 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 Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Bardis, and thank you for the limiting of my time. But I'm, I'm going to give you some references as I go of forward. Of course, I was joking to you have uh, plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> I have the support of the previous speaker, so I can have as much time as he will approve for me. Uh, this, the, the, the title of my talk is Survivability Quantification. These two words are very important because so far we have not been able to really quantify survivability. Because if you quantify survivability, then warfare will be an easy task. And it's not an easy task. I'll give you a reference. A few years ago, I wrote this book. And uh, in, because we had the Olympic Games in Greece in 2004, and we wanted to make safe Olympic Games, and I co collected all the stuff that existed at that time that uh, related to reliability, survivability, and quality for large-scale uh, scale telecommunication systems. This is available, and I take a lot of material from that book. Another very important reference is uh, a chapter that uh, Professor Bardis and uh, Dukas, Nicholas Dukas, uh, we wrote together, and it was published in the book Artificial Intelligence of Cyber Security, and uh, that book is available, and uh, the pages that of our chapter is from 285 to 308. Another paper that we put as a chapter in another book is uh, a review of artificial intelligence cyber threat assessment techniques for increased system survivability. This paper has received so far a lot of citations. Why we talk about survivability? We talk survivability because we are in the midst 
of information revolution. Information revolution, why we have an information revolution? Because new things started to be very important, integration of systems, large, large scale distribution. services or when we say mission we mean that it must provide a, a essential services in a timely manner in the presence of attacks failures and accidents which is with any other activity is different because we say you are going to make our system survivable for at least one service that is very important for us in a timely manner, in the presence of attacks, failures, and like that. So we, we, we have to define a system. We are not waiting for the system to be compromised in order to start correcting it. We have to define it from the beginning, survivable. So how do we do that? Let's keep a lot of introductory slides in order to go faster to the important stuff. Uh, so in order to say that you're gonna solve a very important problem, you have to realize that uh, you're looking for a very, uh, very uh, serious task. And then you say that this task can be faced or or we find the solution by survivability. We have defined survivability, but then we have to prove that this, this tool, which is called survivability, is autonomous. We don't need anything else. It's self-sufficient. That's why I'm saying, could the, the gap which exists with the other approaches can be closed by survivability. And if we do not answer this, we have not done much. Classification of survivability strategies that lead to survival system requirements. So before you solve a problem, you must uh, uh, study and find out what are the requirements for the solution. And here we have resistance, recognition, recovery, and adaptation to evolution. And I explain in this slide what we mean by each of these aspects. We, I think this lecture could be delivered if somebody asks for it. And Nico. So, we in the previous slide we said that these are the the aspects of the, stra the strategies you must follow and then we we have to find uh, what kind of attributes so attributes means what other components of this survivability we must study and we must quantify in order to use this quantification of the components of survivability to find the, quant the quantification or to proceed towards the quantification of survivability. So if in my previous, uh, uh, if the previous lecturer uh, from Israel uh, has seen this, he's, he will say that you are trying to solve the problem in a common sense way. I'm not doing something revolutionary. I'm trying to go by step by step, define survivability, what kind of attributes it must have, and what kind of components it has, and uh, how we can uh, 
go towards survivability and quantification of it by quantifying its components. And I said that the components, it can be proven, I did not prove it myself, but I give you here a paper, it can be proven, but it's also, as we go forward, we see that it is almost self-evident that survivability, its main components are availability, reliability, fault tolerance, and security. Let's go to Then, when we go step by step, as I said, availability, uh, reliability, if, if fault tolerance, and security, if we go step by step, that rings the bell. Maybe we can use even artificial intelligence, because artificial intelligence is a step by step process to see if we can uh, do something original. So, I broke up the, the steps that we have to take in order to really use all the attributes of the components and get to a solution in order to find all the requirements of survivability by examining the, the requirements for quantification of each component. And I got this diagram. And uh, now I go a little uh, deeper and uh, define passive and active survivability. Uh, passive is that uh, we design a, a, a system and then we see if that system uh, uh, works. Uh, but uh, in the active survivability, we must also uh, be on the alert uh, if something uh, goes off the project, of the plan. Now, I go again and say, uh, I, I saw that this diagram leads in some sense to artificial intelligence. And then I have to go and see what parameters, what components I'll use for this uh, uh, plan. So I'm going to go to now to analyze components and see how we can quantify them. Because if I can quantify the components of survivability, then I think it is easy, it is easy to realize that uh, an artificial intelligence plan or system will take this quantified uh, parameters and uh, develop a, a system that will give us quantification of survival, survivability. <laughs> so we start from fault tolerance. Fault tolerance is the ability of a network system to continue normal operation despite the presence of hardware or software faults. Uh, this is a good idea, but we have to quantify it. Uh, we also have to realize that fault tolerance is not an independent uh, attribute, but it is a property that is designed into a system to achieve some design goals. The appropriate attribute necessary for fault tolerance is are the following, but we take availability as the primary uh, para component and we go with that and in order to to we broke survivability in its components but each component has also other components its own components as you see we start fault tolerance fault tolerance has to face threats it must have the actions the necessary actions to face the threats and you must also have the means to correct what 
it, the system is suffering from. So we see that one of the attributes, well, you don't see the, the cursor is not shown on the, when I move this, do I get? Then the, 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 so you will see that now another step down is to break every component of observability to its own components. And we see that the, the attribute that availability is part of fault tolerance. Okay. Now we have to understand what we mean by false. So we have permanent faults which lead to permanent error and to system failure. Incorrect design can uh, go to a permanent, create a permanent error and then go to system failure. Unstable or marginal components uh, may, may be create an intermittent error and then uh, arrive to a system failure and so on. This is important. Because when we can define fault tolerance, we have to realize what kind of fault we are dealing with. Now, we, we, since we are going to quantify fault tolerance, we have to see what we mean. And we are going to, to, to find now, we have, since all the components of survivability are random variables, we have to see what we mean in the practical sense and as an average of this uh, probabilistic quantity in the long in the longer time uh, at least uh, as long as terminating its mission which can take days or hours and so on. so from one fault to the other fault this is a time axis we we don't put here numbers because we don't need them. We call it the measure of uh, two, the before a fault. So we have a fault, and the time which be uh, will be by the system will create uh, another fault. We call this MTBF, and then we have uh, from the error. So there is no fault before this fault, but there could be an error in the middle. We, we detect it and then we repair it. And then we find when we come here, we say, well, from uh, right here, before this, uh, this time, I have no fault. I started from here and here, I have no fault, but we may have the system may be under faults in the in the uh, intermittent time, and has been repaired, so we don't see it here. So that means that when we find the probability of this to take place, we also have to add the probability that intermittent faults that have been corrected. So, since we are looking for the average, the average is given by this uh, equation. And now let's go to the other parameter, availability. Availability uh, by doing other, uh, by experience, we have to also use experience in this study of survivability because survivability is a, a very uh, unique uh, concept and in order to solve it you have to use the experience of what you have learned by uh, in, by examining in previous uh, time the its components so it looks like this availability and it starts and you start the system, you design it very well. It go, it starts very well, and then 
it goes down up to this acceptable level. This is now the level that is created by you because you say, no matter how I started, a perfect system, I'll be able to design a survivable system by having an, some non-availability. When I'm here, when I'm here, down here, there is no availability at the level of it's acceptable, but this is enough for me. Now the point, the point of availability is the thing that I told you that I'm looking two times. I'm at the beginning of the end. I don't see at the end any problem, but in the middle maybe other problems. So that is this type of curve for a point availability, which means point availability means. We finish, Nick. We have the more time. Ten minutes. Okay. So, as an average now, we are going to accept the average, the mean of how how many seconds or hours the system is up working, how many minutes is down we add up and down and make this ratio and that will be the mean of available availability but we have to since i i, I use the curve as a function of time for availability i can do it mathematically finding the average and then i know how to determine the average and the average uh, could be enough to be to be calculated by this this formula but we have also the other uh, mathematical expression that we can do it exactly now you go to reliability uh, and we see the reliability has some sub components fault tolerance and availability this has been proven in order to control reliability the reliability besides other features must also uh, be able to handle fault tolerance and availability so we see the third component of survivability is reliability there are many ways to compute it mathematically because we we say that from one node to the other the system can have many nodes the the process of travel the fault traveling is markovian so we don't if we have fault in one node doesn't mean that we this will affect the next node and so on and this is a, like a markov system for as far as reliability is concerned and there are many books that uh, give us how to calculate the reliability. And if we go back now, we can see that reliability as a time function is equal to E minus T divided by this uh, average so, uh, availability that we uh, uh, fault tolerance that we studied or uh, developed before. Now the other component is security, and we see that security uh, is have, has uh, also uh, availability uh, and the the fault tolerance. Uh, as components and therefore and reliability and uh, we therefore uh, have to calculate calculate uh, this uh, this component and 
Now, this component will, uh, the, the security component also depends on other parameters, and those are parameters that are, are uh, be behind what we are trying to do, but we have to to re to examine them because one of them is cryptography for security, which is uh, something that we have to study outside of our uh, attempt to find the survivability of the system. That's why I don't have any, uh, for this case, I don't have any quantification for security because it depends on other aspects which are beyond everything we said and everything we have thought to see uh, what kind of process needed is needed to to achieve survivability it's tabled here and uh, again we go to the other uh, uh, aspects that we mentioned before and uh, now we go to the to the final result. In order to have survivability, you must be able to calculate uh, availability, reliability, fault tolerance, and security, and find a, a number, acceptable number, which means that if the system follows these numbers, the quantification of any of its components, and all of them, the system is called survival. And if it's called survival, then I say, how can we do something original? We say, I design my system. And I say, according to the parameters I, uh, I found and I calculated, I quantified uh, for its parameters, I put them here. Then the system works, but somebody who is here, a central control, uh, attends the development of the mission. So if at this point he gets the quantification of these components as it was planned, he gives, he gives them a signal here, go ahead. Supposing with the time and some other means or some other way, uh, this, this system is attacked. If it's attacked, some of these parameters will be, be below its acceptable level. Or if it's below the acceptable level, we say the system is no more survival. So the, the main controller, ah, we, uh, the attack will be identified here in the multi-stage uh, deep learning artificial intelligence because the, the system here has all the parameters that we, we calculated before and will give now the new parameters to the controller. If the controller sees that the parameters it got from this system are the correct ones, he says, okay, follow the new plan. Because each time the parameters go below the acceptable level, the system has to done and do another strategy. It cannot be done by trying to wait to see maybe the fault is uh, eliminated by itself. So this is something that I am going to uh, to tell my colleague from Israel, maybe he 
he'll put this in his agenda of as a mentor for the acad academia. Now, warfare systems. Warfare systems is another uh, area of research. It's military and survivability is a very important aspect. Uh, we explain what uh, we are going to study, electronic warfare, with, uh, with components, so on. And try to, to see how, what a new plan we have to use for warfare. It's not going to be the same plan because warfare has attacks, has tricks, has uh, other means to compromise the system of the defender. These are the quantification process that has to take place in order to, as it is related to welfare systems. And uh, of course, uh, we said that we, we search for innovative uh, approaches uh, using or thinking of an artificial intelligence for the previous case. For this now, for the warfare, maybe a, a new one or more sophisticated we have to use. But uh, how you, you, you use a, a better than a, a new one, you have to go back and see if another type of a system that's used in the military could be used as an example to, to quantify uh, survivability for military system, for electronic warfare. And all of a sudden, we found out that the, the mobile uh, ad hoc uh, systems have this feature that will, will, will give us uh, the way to quantify survivability for military, for electronic warfare. And that was that we have to use for our system, the ISO model which breaks down the original system to its seven le one le component, seven components. We do that. This is the OSI system. We analyze the, how the, the manets, which are the mobile ad hoc uh, transmission systems, and we see how we, the previous slides we show how their military aspects uh, apply to survivability and I analyze them. For this type of uh, uh, systems, we define the survivability, we start with the, the acceptable level of survivability, but in a military system, we have to accept that as time goes on, this survivability will be down, you go to the level, but this is the, the area we have to, to use uh, the breakdown of the seven layer ISO model in order to, uh, to be working are trying to to uh, uh, correct this part, and then in at the end we were going to say we're going to have to have a value for survivability, and the value is well, we are going to to do everything we said, and then at the end to to calculate the a number of uh, a number which is the quantity or the quantification of survivability and that's the the the, the function which is uh, the payoff that we get from the operation or the loss that we suffer
uh, here I show the that the the the, the OSI model uh, for military systems is reduced to to four levels instead of seven. This makes our life easier. And now I say maybe maybe we have to be smart and go beyond the artificial intelligence. Maybe you can use a game, a game theory. And why you can use a game theory here? Because in order to to apply game theory to any problem, you must have players, you must have strategies, which we call it in the in our everyday language as a, a second plan, plan B, plan C, and so on. And uh, those are the strategies we have them in our in our disposal. Okay. And the and the, uh, the the we have the strategies, we have the players, and we have the payoffs. And the payoffs will will be the ones will if we use a game uh, which looks like a nice. Uh, game, then we expect to get to equilibrium, and the equilibrium is this the solution to the, the problem, to survivability problem, and we, we have to accept the equilibrium as the final decision. That's it. There is no going to be another decision, but in, in, in a game theory, if you reach an equilibrium, then the whatever you get, you are going to accept it because by the way you develop the game system, it means the equilibrium. If you don't accept it as a player, whether you are defender or attacker, you that means that whatever else you do will be worse for you. And uh, I final, I, I I I show how the game can be used in electronic warfare, and. I'm going to tell you, since you are Ukrainians, that uh, Russians have the best mathematicians in the world. I know it by experience. And I'm sure before attacking Ukraine, uh, they did everything that they could do to see how uh, they're going to succeed in a few days. And I'm sure after they found their original plan, they said, let's play a game. The play the game arrived at the point that in order to, to do your plan, everything you said, you must surround Kiev and get into Kiev in, to, to, in a week. That was the game. That was the, 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 the point that would be uh, good for Russia, but that game it was not effective, and look what happened. Maybe that proves that they don't have the best mathematicians. No, no, they, they... <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 no. They have the best mathematicians. They play the game. they play the game that I'm showing here, and they got an equilibrium that says you have to capture the president in one week. But they did that. They tried. They circled Kiev by 1,000 tanks. And then they, the, the Ukrainians used the drones and destroyed them. And what do we say now? Superpower Russia, you go back. The game was played well, but they, they, they did not uh, realize that they had to use it because it was very so i'm given a solution to the ukrainian <laughs> problem and uh, this is so survivability is a very complicated concept it has components the, every component of survivability has components again and all of them have to work in a certain way that you calculate them and if one of them of the of the 
maybe 30, 40 uh, components. It is below during the, the emission, it is below, it is acceptable. You stop, you re, re, redo another strategy, you recalculate the these components, and if you get to a level that are acceptable, you say, let's play a game now to see if the equilibrium will will arrive at a point where after many retires, we get to the same equilibrium. So if the game th theory gives you a equilibrium that do not uh, like it, you stop and you are, you are thinking of your original plan. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I have more to show you, but uh, I think I did uh, exactly. Yes. We don't have such a time. Thank you, Professor Professor Stavroulakis, for your presentation. It's very useful, and of course, uh, uh, as well now, because the most of uh, from here were uh, from engineering, uh, engineering uh, sciences, uh, availability, availability, and uh, all of this is very important for our systems, of course. Uh, please, have we any questions? Yes. Uh, yes, first of all, because we're in uh, both uh, and uh, offline and online, okay? Let's start with uh, offline and uh, Professor Popov uh, has to make a question. Sorry, um, can you try? Try to speak. Um, so, interesting uh, talk. Clearly, there is uh, quite a bit of um, overlap between what you presented and uh, a very well known example known uh, within this uh, community of uh, dependability, which was developed years ago by uh, Abigenis, uh, Randall, and uh, a few others, uh, of course. Um, but my question is really about uh, this survivability. I can see clear uh, uh, similarity with uh, something which is currently uh, used, resilience. I can stand to use the term uh, resiliency. Um, if I understood correctly, you don't define in your uh, presentation uh, survival, uh, if it survives, whether the quality of service that the system uh, offers after being subjected to either failures or uh, to attacks, whether the quality of service uh, remains at the optimal level or it uh, may deteriorate. This, uh, this seems to be the difference between operation on the normal conditions of, and the system which is uh, resilient. If you visibility, resilience will probably at the, the survivability at the ex uh, expense of uh, getting worse quality of uh, service. So I would like you to uh, comment if uh, possible. The, 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 quantification of of the quantification of survivability and since it is calculated uh, continuously during a mission, in order to create uh, the payoff of the of the mission and get a, a number, that uh, is uh, in military system as I read many electronic warfare uh, situations uh, is uh, covered by this uh, procedure. And uh, as I said, at the end, when you make all these calculations, you run also a game theory problem in order to see if you get to a, an equilibrium that uh, will be acceptable for you. Uh, resilience is, a, is a, if, if you say the resilience, but I don't know if the resilience was broken up in, in its components and see how the final quantity of resilience is a uh, a result of the quantification of its component because whatever you say resilience acceptability dependability has components and you don't know which component is very important in the realization of resilience don't know, then what are you doing? Well, you, 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 if you don't know if you don't know you have to break it down as i told you this was a very important problem and 
the, the ISO model is very important because if you broken up to all levels, then when you play the game, one of the players, there is going to be, when you play the game in a warfare, because of the ISO model, you don't think player says only the attacker and the uh, defender, but also the nodes. Each node is a player. Why? Because you may have the node that says networking. Networking, net, net, the network node has to send a lot of data in order because he receiving a lot of data. He has to send it and the transport layer says, ah, then Bruno, I cannot send all of this data. I get congestion and uh, the system now is performing that the transport layer does not work according to the plan. So the, the, the disadvantage of a game is that according to Nash, if you go more than two players, you are in a big trouble. The game may not uh, get into equilibrium. And since this, this uh, problem requires a lot of players, it's very difficult. But uh, at the end, you, you do it as a verifying problem to your original plan. So, to account the environment. Yeah, yes, of course, it, 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 of course. Of course. The environment is the preparing to yeah. the, your mission. Yes, very nice. And uh, you have lost the network. Do you have any more questions? Okay, more questions? I, I, like, I like more questions. <laughs> we, we understood <laughs> because I, I, I hope the Israeli colleague uh, is I have a very short question. Yeah. Uh, as we see that um, there's some uh, direction about uh, the resilience as a fault tolerance, as a reability, availability, and that's all. All of these we have met. Yes. You propose a method to combine all that with artificial intelligence, and then from the, after that you can discuss and make the decision about the percent of solvability for the system. Do we have real metrics on that? For what? So 